Today is Monday, January 7th. The government shutdown may start to affect you, from long airport lines to your tax refund. I'll explain. Plus, what you might not know about the weather app on your phone, how therapy and income are linked, and the highlights from the Golden Globes. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks for being here. You ready? Let's do this. President Trump says he may call a national emergency to build a border wall without the approval of Congress, although others argue he can't legally do that. And for now, he's still trying to make a deal. In fact, the AP reports President Trump is relaxing a bit about what a barrier on the border could actually be, that it could be steel slats on the border instead of a concrete wall. Still, Democrats say it's a waste of money either way. They want to pass bills to fund the government in the short term while these negotiations continue. The partial government shutdown, now in its third week, is already the third longest shutdown in history. By Wednesday, it'll be the second longest. And after this Friday, it'll become the longest government shutdown ever. And right now, it seems it will come to that. The White House press secretary said President Trump is willing to continue the shutdown for months if he has to. So get ready to feel the effects of this shutdown. Yes, we've talked about the 800,000 federal workers either working without pay or on unpaid leave. And for some of them, that means they can't pay their bills right now. But now you may even run into problems, like at the airport, for example. CNN says hundreds of TSA agents who are asked to work without pay right now have started to call out sick at four major airports. And that means airport security lines are much longer. Then there are other things that might not get addressed since workers are told not to come in at all, like home loans and tax refunds. The people who issue tax refunds are furloughed, meaning millions of people may not get their checks on time. Also, the National Park Service just said it'll take a rare and, quote, extraordinary step. It'll use entrance, camping, and other fees just to keep the most popular parks functioning. It's money that usually goes to other future projects. Instead, it'll go to cleaning up trash and maintaining the bathrooms. Although The Hill reports a House committee will investigate if this is even allowed. So more talks between the White House and congressional leaders will be happening this week. Both sides are feeling pressure. Stay tuned. Maybe U.S. troops won't leave Syria so quickly after all. National Security Advisor John Bolton said the U.S. will need to confirm a few things before pulling 2,000 U.S. troops out of northeastern Syria. Remember, President Trump just said last month that he wants all of those troops home and fast. And it did cause some backlash, like Defense Secretary Jim Mattis resigning. Well, now CBS News reports Bolton is saying two things need to happen before those troops leave. One, make sure ISIS is really out of there for good. And two, get Turkey to say it'll leave our Kurdish fighter allies alone. Otherwise, they could be left vulnerable once the U.S. is gone. Bolton is even going to Turkey today to talk about it. But the new timetable for all of this is still unclear. Was it an acoustic weapon or crickets? Yes, crickets. That's actually a question being asked right now about the odd sound U.S. diplomats were hearing in Cuba. As early as 2016, diplomats at the U.S. Embassy in Cuba complained of strange sounds, and some even suffered brain injuries. It's been a mystery ever since, with many thinking it was some sort of attack on the U.S. The AP got a hold of one recording of one of the high-pitched noises reported. And now The Guardian reports scientists in the U.K. and the U.S. believe that one recorded noise actually came from a certain type of cricket. The cricket noise, of course, would not actually cause physical harm like brain injuries— So perhaps there was a separate attack of some sort. This whole thing is still a mystery. A new UK study links psychotherapy, also called talk therapy, to higher income. Researchers looked at data for thousands of men and women from 1995 to 2008 and filtered out other factors like their education. The conversation reports they found that, yes, psychotherapy helped people improve their mental health, but it also increased their incomes. For men, they got a 13 percent boost and women saw an 8 percent increase. Much more news ahead, but I want to take a moment because I'm so excited about this week's new sponsor. It's something that can make one of the best times of your life even happier. 
Zola is the easiest way to plan your wedding and your registry. It gives you all the modern tools in one place. So you get a free, gorgeous wedding website that takes just minutes to set up. You get a personalized and dream wedding registry with the widest selection of gifts at all different price points. And Zola even has affordable and stylish save the dates and invitations, plus other planning tools to help you save time in the planning process. I appreciated all the wedding gifts I got a couple of years ago when I got married, but we only got things like pots and pans, and that's pretty much it. With Zola, you can get those things, plus set up funds that are so much more meaningful and personal. In fact, my cousin used Zola, and I got to buy him and his wife a night in a cabin on their honeymoon. How cool is that? So to check it out, start your free wedding website and also get $50 toward your registry on Zola, go to Zola.com slash newsworthy. Again, go to Zola, Z-O-L-A dot com slash newsworthy. Now back to the news. All right, heads up. If you drive a Ford, there's a recall to tell you about. Ford is recalling 953,000 cars and SUVs because of concerns over the Takata airbags. The airbags can explode and may hurt people in the car. Yes, if this all sounds familiar, it's all part of what has become the largest series of recalls in U.S. history. Because there are so many airbags affected across automakers, the Takata recalls are being phased in through 2020. I've linked to the list of recalled vehicles in today's show notes on thenewsworthy.com. The Weather Channel app is facing a lawsuit over your privacy. CNET reports attorneys for the city of Los Angeles are suing the app's developer, accusing the company of selling your location data without your permission. The lawsuit says the weather company, owned by IBM, manipulated its users, making them think they were sharing their location just for the weather report when that info was actually being used for things like marketing, and that the terms of the whole thing are buried in long user agreements. But IBM says not so fast, that the app clearly states how data is collected and used, and the company plans to fight the lawsuit. It is the first major awards ceremony of the year, and last night's 76th annual Golden Globe Awards was historic. NBC News says Sandra Oh made history twice as the first Asian host of the Golden Globes. She co-hosted with Andy Samberg, and also as the first woman of Asian descent to win multiple Golden Globes, including the award for Best Actress in a TV Series Drama. She stars in Killing Eve. The hosts left out politics and were more positive and nice with their jokes. Maya Rudolph did a fake proposal to Amy Poehler while they presented. And when Regina King won, she made a serious pledge to produce only projects with a crew that is at least 50% women. The movies Bohemian Rhapsody and Green Book took the top film honors with Best Drama and Best Comedy. Bohemian Rhapsody won over other movies like Black Panther and A Star is Born, so many are calling that one a surprise. As for Gaga, the song Shallow did win Best Original Song. Christian Bale won Best Actor in a Comedy for his role in Vice, although he caused some controversy for saying he was inspired by Satan to play Dick Cheney. And a new award was added, the Carol Burnett Award for Lifetime Achievement in Television. Carol Burnett herself accepted the first award. Of course, there were many more moments. I'm linking to more highlights in today's show notes. Aquaman had its third weekend in a row on top. It was once again number one at the box office in North America. Variety says the movie did not have much competition, though. Still, Aquaman has now brought in $940 million worldwide. And that's it. You are all caught up from the weekend. If you'd like to check out more of any of the stories mentioned today, just go to the homepage of thenewsworthy.com, click episodes, and look for today's date. You'll find all the story sources and links right there. The Newsworthy is ready for you to listen every weekday by four in the morning. I'll be back with more news tomorrow. Have a great day.